Hello, time for another first on the channel. This is one a lot of people have been talking about and requesting, and in general, the feedback from people I've heard has been positive. So, time to put this 500 watt USB brick to the test to find out if it can stay on and deliver all 500 watts. That's a lot of watts. I'm sure there's going to be some trouble along the way, like getting 48 volts to work and trying to get power out of the device. That's gonna require some tricky work. Being a 500 watt adapter, it will be interesting to check how this adapter performs for lighter loads like charging a phone. A six port adapter, which still has the one legacy USB-A port hanging out there. I guess it's nice to have at least one still. I have plenty of older devices that need that port, so I'm not complaining. There is certainly enough power on the other ports to make up for that. 500 watts is a lot of power to move through a power adapter. So the real question, on this thing is how long is it going to stay on? If the efficiency is high enough, maybe it will stay on for a while. All of these parameters and more will be checked throughout the video. It's going to get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. This Ugreen adapter is a monster. I mean, it's heavy and large, which kind of tells you everything about those other 500 watt adapters. This thing might be the real deal. It's certainly made for the at home desktop charging of several devices. In general, there are a few things I look for on a power adapter. The safety listing, of course, is a main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on a device. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device has that mark and it also has a six in a circle, which at this power level isn't generally included, but it has it. Certainly something that will be checked out in the data section. Really, this doesn't stand a chance of staying on if it doesn't comply anyway. So this power adapter has a three pin AC mains power connector. Is the third pin connected? The answer is yes. It is directly connected through to the USB output pins. This isn't a safety violation, but it's the choice they made. It actually may help in the case of a fault in the device. The isolation will be checked later on. So you'll notice I'm not using the normal AC power source here. I had to upgrade to something larger to be able to power this thing. Also, I had to run a power cord to a different room to get enough juice because this thing is hungry. Anyway, the new AC power source is an eBay find. Good stuff. So time to plug this in and see what happens. No smoke, that's always a good sign. The power consumption is staying very low. Aha, there it is. The device draws little pulses of current every once in a while. Going to have to do a longer averaging time. Also the crest factor is wild, so going to have to make some measurement adjustments to that too. Anyway, once everything settles down, the actual idle wattage is very low. This is the way the standards are written, so this is perfectly acceptable. The volt amps are high. On 230 volts, it's like 60 VA doing nothing. So, like I said, standard says real power. Ignore this number. That means the other number is junk. Okay, time to check some cables with various attachments. I have a lightning cable, a MagSafe laptop cable, and a MagSafe puck. The idle power consumption does increase with each of these devices. It is normal and expected, but it didn't actually increase too much. So really the performance with these few odds and ends left plugged in is reasonably good. I did a video looking at some USB trigger boards a short while back, and I have one option to trigger 48 volts directly at the source. Well, that was too good to be true. It tries, doesn't quite get to the voltage, then something prevents it from working. It just keeps cycling on and off in an endless loop. Looks like the makers of this need to reevaluate the 48 volt mode. It does 36 volts fine. I also have the Power Z tester, which can be a trigger, and does also work up to 48 volts. The trouble is, it doesn't let you connect anything else to it when it's acting as a trigger. So I'm able to get the 48 volts, but even connecting a dumb USB cable to the output, literally only using the power pins, turns it off. So I had another adapter laying around, not really designed for power, but I attached some wires and this pulls the voltage off of the input side. And yes, finally, I can get that 48 volt somewhere useful. This is very specific wiring on this board that lets me use it this way, and it's not recommended. The traces are not wide enough to carry five amps on the side where current is flowing, so this gets real hot. The reason this heat generated on the board is not being counted is the four wire measurement. The company that makes this is Treedix. Yep, that's the name. 
Anyway, I'm going to have to design one of these boards because this PD trigger is the only thing I have that works, and I'm sure power supplies are going to be coming out that need this. Okay, and there it is, 48 volts on the load tester. Time to turn up the watts and see how it does. And yeah, 240 watts on one USB cable. No problem, except all the previous problems. This power adapter is fairly capable though. In terms of its basic specifications, it has a wide range of modes of operation. The PPS mode is 21 volts and can do the current needed, and it includes the elusive 12 volt mode. As mentioned, that one port does go all the way to 48 volts. So first one I've seen that can do that, neat. The power renegotiation was better than most as well, which makes sense considering the power budget. I was able to use the four USB-C ports with no renegotiation. If you add one more, those ports will swap the power levels around and cycle. The first port seems to stay at 240 watts though. The quick data for this device shows that it is fairly efficient. For a 500 watt power supply, maybe not that much improvement, but good enough to get the job done. It does show a 1% improvement on 230 volts too. The overload is 260 watts on the one port, so fairly generous. The idle power usage is at real power at the device and measures low. This isn't real because of the high VA usage though. The detailed data for this adapter shows that it meets the efficiency and idle power requirements no problem. On 120 volt, you can see the top efficiency around 93%. This is very good. The voltage and output ripple stayed surprisingly low in all tests. It's one of the better USB power supplies in terms of the output regulation and voltages. Flipping over to 230 volts AC and the peak efficiency improved to 94%. That's great. I expect this would actually run a good while longer on 230 volt supplies versus 120 volt supplies. At 120 volts, the extra 10 watts or so of generated heat make it not sustainable. Even with that, in the thermal testing, the device stayed on. It got warm, but not what I would say hot. It was interesting in that a small area heated up first and then it slowly spread out over the device. The issue was this is still rising in temperature after an hour, so it was never equilibrium or stable. It will shut down or throttle eventually at 500 watts out, but in comparison with other devices at this power level, this is generally a good result. Time to compare these chargers. Continuing the theme of testing some big USB chargers, really the biggest in this case, that I can find that actually are a realistic charger. I know there's an industrial one with like a thousand watts and it's rack mount. If you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. So I'm gonna compare to what I've tested for larger chargers. The Anchor 240 watt, the Ugreen 300, and a few others, of course. The Ugreen takes the cake as the biggest charger I've tested. In terms of isolation, which is the thing separating the dangerous side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, this did okay. The U-Green does have a bit more leakage current. This is expected as the capacitance between the two sides of the circuit are expected to go up with a larger, more complicated transformer. Yeah, they could design this out, but not in a mass produced consumer product. It's not amazing, but it's fine. The leakage will be shunted through the ground path anyway. In terms of weight and size, no one can stand in this class. This thing is heavy and it's big. It's kind of shocking. You don't expect nearly two kilograms for a power adapter. Finally, the rubber feet still can't hold the adapter in place when you plug and unplug USB cables, so you have to hold it down. People complained about the Apple adapter being unrealistically too big to carry, and it's one of the lightest and most efficient 140 watt adapters on the market. Really, the only one that stood the test of time. So yeah, you could buy three of those, still be smaller and lighter, although it would cost a bit more. In terms of value, the Thunder Go still crushes everyone. But, you know, no safety, other things that aren't great. The Ugreen adapter, though, it's actually priced very reasonably for a 500 watt USB adapter that can actually do the power level it claims. It's expensive, yeah, but it can deliver. So if you need the watts, then the spend does kind of make sense. The 240 watts on one port does work fine. I know I'll have to get that Delta power supply in here at some point. When looking at the idle graph for these, the Ugreens do well. They manage to keep the idle power consumption on par with some single port USB adapters of much smaller sizes and much outperformed their own 300 watt adapter from a short while back. On an adapter like this, you can leave the USB C to C cables plugged in and this is the state it will idle down to. 
the average power consumption graph is covering quite a range. These are all pretty high efficiency adapters. Some are not taking home any prizes, but did have better performance in some of the other tests and had more features like the Sabrent. This adapter is better than the Apple 140 watt adapter, which is a very efficient adapter, but it looks like some of the newer technologies are starting to show up in real world efficiency values. As we saw, the Ugreen can deliver the watts, and it does it while dissipating a reasonably low amount of heat. Will it do 500 watts 24 hours a day? Not a chance, but it will power a power station and it'll be charged before it shuts itself down. So yeah, I'm pretty good with that. So, the Ugreen 500 watt is another power adapter, the heaviest, largest power adapter I've seen. That's not just fake BS. It still has some flaws, but they are minimal, and the question on how it will stand up over time is still open. Hopefully not like that first generation 300 watt adapter. This brick is efficient though, but you really need to use it. It's not the brick for low power usage. It is heavy enough to be a brick. You really need to have at least three or four devices connected to this thing and they need to be using high power. So something like multi-port charging a power bank or several large power banks at once or multiple laptops at once. You aren't gonna wanna take this with you and the low power specifications aren't great. A use case may be a computer lab with laptops. This can probably handle five moderately sized laptops simultaneously pretty easily. You know, 65 watt business grade type each. Maybe a USB-C powered mini computer, one that can take advantage of 48 volts especially. I don't think those exist yet. With monitors that can actually use USB-C for power input too. But when that system idles down, this kind of falls apart. For me, I'll probably put this to use pre-charging a bunch of power banks and power stations for future videos and for testing. But other than for someone like me that can pull enough watts to put this into the good functional range, what use does this charger have? Let me know your use case for this thing and if it's the one for you. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.